Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Adobe Live here in the UK on the sofa with me, Maddie. And today we've got a wonderful guest, uh, Jasmine Sarah. Welcome to hey Adobe guys. Live. Hello. <laughs> We're so happy to have you here today. Um, we've done a lot of collaboration with FemType. Um, this is our fourth session um, with some, third, some amazing. Third. Type oh, it's our fifth session. Look at me getting ahead already. <laughs> we've read some great typography and. Um, today. Um, what I would say is if any of you want to join the chat, as you know, we're live on Behance, so please go to behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. We won't be having the chat through YouTube, so definitely come and join us in Behance to ask all of the questions. Um, and I can see a lot of you already here today. Hey, Robert. Hey, Sean. Hi, Sandrine. Hi, Lucinda. Uh, I can see a lot of the people. We, we get a lot of people that come back. Um, for each, you know, for each of these. I love seeing you here again. So hi, Kirsty. Hey, Gareth. So yeah, so lots of people here. Um, and Jasmine, really, you know, welcome. It's so good to have you on. Thank you for having me. Um, cool. I I've got a little presentation. I feel like I should maybe talk ah. through that and just kind of share my journey and to where I'm at now. Um, yeah, cool. Good plan. Yeah, no, definitely. And we're keen because, of course, with the FemType sessions that we've had so far, the brief was to design a concert poster because all of the concerts and all the well, festivals, I should say, were cancelled. And so um, I know that you've been part of this as well. So definitely keen to see some of your work and the process really that you 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 take to produce this amazing work. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. OK, I'm going to just start off with an intro to me. Um, I am an illustrator and designer and I um, kind of do a few little things. So wait, let me, let me take the back. Typography, illustration, um, uh, product design and customization. Um, so my kind of work is really inspired by old school Bollywood kind of poster type. I don't know if you can see that. Has it changed? Uh, it's still on the same screen, I think, that we that we started with. Here we go. Nope. Oh my god. Yeah, but it's not. Um, I'm switching my screen, but it's not working. Don't worry. It might just take a minute. This all this often happens. Don't worry. But um, if you if you try your iPad screen, yeah. and then and here we go. But you definitely work across a lot of things, and um, yeah, so um, so many projects. I know. Um, so over the years, I kind of um, like my style kind of really developed within the last few years. Um, it kind of all began with um, discovering my parents' old school vintage T-shirt collection and like their of old school cassette tapes and just the graphics on the tapes and um the t-shirts and stuff was really just so amazing to me the typography mm. but also like the um the layout of things the patterns the colors and oh my god i just wish you guys could see the screen because you can understand like <laughs> what um where my inspiration comes from um uh -huh. No, and don't worry, this often, as I said, you know, this happens. We are so used to that on Adobe Live. When we go live, this, you know, this often happens. I would say um, if we try to get back to your iPad, what, what screen are you sharing now? Is it your computer? Um, or... It's my iPad. Oh, it is the iPad. Yeah. Maybe if we can close it and store it again. Well, all of you, while oh. we're waiting, um, oh, here we go. Well, Jasmine finds those. I should definitely point you towards her Instagram. Um, there there's is. some amazing work on there. The colours, <laughs> the images. Oh, here we go. It's exact. This is exactly what you would see on the um, on the Instagram. But yes, it's me, working. <laughs> yeah. So, um, kind of using sort of my craft to 
create pieces that are quite um, sort of positive, that has positive messages and, you know, that illustrate a few things that are sort of, a few things that are happening in the world, like just important sort of topic matters. Um, and yeah, just kind of using typography to sort of communicate and illustrate these message messages. Um, so this is actually a body reposter series that I started, um, which kind of led on to doing more sort of mural work. And then soon after, I kind of focused more on typography, more than sort of um, the portraiture side of things. Um, and again, just focusing on sort of positive typography, words of empowerment, um, and that's kind of like an ongoing theme within my work. Also, I have to point out that I'm obsessed with palm trees as well. Um, but I just feel like the, that kind of imagery, the palm trees and like the imagery of nature is just so like positive to me and just really uplifting. So those are things that I kind of incorporate within my work. Um, and just a few more things that I do, just um, customization pieces, digital artwork. Um, and these are a few projects that I've worked on throughout the years. So yeah, just kind of a small insight. To the and I'm loving the so the trainers you've got there. I can see the converse, um, and yeah. I've got to share with you all. When I was having a look at Jasmine's Instagram, Jasmine has worked on the most amazing pair of Adidas trainers with like a London city skyline. Jasmine, they are honestly mm. amazing. Thank you. Thank you it's, so much. Um, they're so good. You all got to go. It's on still Instagram available to purchase if you guys want to buy a pair. But check it out. <laughs> Check it out yeah. on my page. They're pretty cool. Those makeup bottles, look at them. Yeah, that was a really fun project to work with. Well, work on, sorry. Um, cool. Yeah. I feel like, so I started off doing a lot of hand painting, um, hand painted pieces. Now I kind of do more sort of digital work. I still do obviously customization and things like that, which is really cool. And I do like sort of, I guess that's why I kind of like using the iPad to create, because you're able to use that sort of, fluid hand movement to create different type and yeah I, I don't know it's just yeah it's a cool little thing to use <laughs> and today yeah. I'll be using fresco as well so oh that's cool and do you find that you often start your projects by drawing so from the iPad and then moving it into an application to develop it further or is it mostly all drawing or um yeah so normally it's so a good thing as well with like fresco and just a few apps on the iPad is that you can um take it into photoshop and illustrator and just sort of tweak it if you need it if you need to um so yeah i do do that sometimes um depending on the project of course <laughs> nice and i love the use of the color like everything is colorful vibrant um you know really summer vibes coming from a lot of the yeah work that's said. yeah that's that's what i love and um i think you'll see with the piece i'm about to create today as well like, i'm just going to carry on that theme and yeah, just create something really cool and like bright and just, just dope. <laughs> <laughs> cool, let's jump in, let's have a look. Um, yeah. I know that everybody here would be keen to see your process and see how you, um, you know, go through your, cool. your project. And we haven't had any questions in there yet at the moment. Although Jackie had said that her mum would have told her off for painting on her shoes, clothes and camera. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> um, Cool. So I've got Fresco open here. Um, I've created a sketch. Um, I kind of usually... Oh! And I think we need to close an application. Here we are. I think we're having some technical difficulties, Sorry, everybody, but don't worry at all. Um, yeah, if we um, if we close this down, then we'll be able to get into the drawing part of, here we go. Um, that moving in there. It's yes. still on the same screen for me. Here we are. Looks a 
some bits coming through. No, it hasn't changed for me yet. I wasn't sure if it was a Wi-Fi uh, or thing. So, um, so Jasmine, how did you learn? You, you know, this this art. Did you study art at um, at college and university, or is it something that you you've picked up as a hobby? Um, yeah, I studied it in university. Um, I did graphic and media design for illustration at LCC. Um, but you know, creativity has always been kind of like a part of my childhood growing up. Um, a lot of my family are sort of musicians and artists themselves, so we we're kind of surrounded by that kind of, um, yeah, just surrounded by creativity growing up. So it yeah. was definitely something that I was always going to do. I've always loved yeah. it. Um, and yeah, so just been at it throughout the years. Good. Yeah, it's being surrounded by creativity. And we always say, actually, on Adobe Live, you know, always be creating. There's always something that we, you know, even if you're going out for a walk and you're seeing, you know, colours that you want to capture, um, yeah. or bring into a project or, a, you know, typeface, font, you know, anything like that. Um, always bring those into your projects. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think I, I can still see your screen from before. Are you able to close yeah, I don't know and then open your... Do you try closing? I open have. Thing. Um, I'm not too sure why it's not working. No. Okay. Yeah. So we're just experiencing some technical um, problems, everyone. But as soon as we get in, we'll be able to get into the process of creativity from Jasmine. And I've already seen actually some of the little sketches and things that Jasmine's got planned. I can't wait for you to see. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get Yeah, in. I'm really excited to get into it. This needs to hurry up. <laughs> Come on. No worries. Oops. Here we are. We're working behind the scenes, everybody, to get this um, this ready for you. And it's always hard when you go live. But you know, Jasmine, it's so good that you're here. And you know, with the FemTech collaboration, how do you work with the group actually? So um, with the other designers that we've met already, um, do you have regular meetings, or is this more of a like a creativity sharing platform? How do you work with FemTech? Um, I only discovered femtype recently actually um i couldn't believe it that i haven't actually come across femtype before it's such an amazing platform um but yeah i kind of just recently came across them um but i've spoken to in the previous i've spoken to emily and um about this project sorry guys i'm just trying to i'm just trying to figure this out um yeah no worries yeah, we had Emily last week, and I know it was Racer the week before. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we've been looking at different types of typography, different ways to design. And it, what's interesting that I've found being on, um, you know, ho hosting the Adobe Live and watching all of the processes is um, the apps that people use. I would automatically go to Adobe Illustrator as the one place that I would begin it with something like this. But what's been really nice is that we've seen that everyone has different preferences. Um, I think Racer used InDesign and started there. Um, Emily used Illustrator last week. And I know that you've got uh, your iPad ready and you begin your you know, these, these types of sketches. So again, it's another different practice as well. So it's definitely, um, you know, it, it preference, I guess, you know. Um, no, so definitely. So I think we... Sorry, guys. No, don't worry. It will come up soon when it's ready to. So I think we might have a video we can show you actually while we wait. Um, to get this sorted. So if you could just give us a moment and I think we'll be all right. Thanks everyone. Hi everybody. Hi. Welcome to Adobe Live. That was amazing. Yeah, so we did this. <laughs> so look at this, this added highlight, which just pling, just wow. painted hair.
This is the greatest reason to watch these streams. I have been using Illustrator for so long and have never used that. Experiment. Don't be afraid to mess up. I really like it. Mine could be more mm -hmm. deep as yeah. far as the cut so that you can see it. Ooh. Right? All right, everybody. I think that we are finally there. Um, Jasmine, no worries. Thank you for remaining cool. Um, this I was is panicking live inside. <laughs> Bless you. Don't worry. This is what happens when we go live. But you know what? We stick with it. We turn it off. We probably give it a punch. <laughs> and then we, we press it back on again and it normally gets it working. So um, let's jump straight in. Let's have a look at what Ooh. you've got back. Um, so I've done a little sketch here, just a really rough sketch of um, what I'm going to create today. Um, and I've actually going to, I'm going to be making a post in response to love box cancelling. Um, of course, like Emily said last week, love box is amazing. Like the branding is amazing, but it's also a festival that I feel like I would actually go to because um, of the music artists that would have been um, performing there. So I feel like I have that kind of connection in terms of um, sort of you know the music genre and stuff like that um and the quote that i'm going to be illustrating today is energy cannot be contained just kind of play on words on like you know love box and having a festival obviously the vibes that you feel in a festival you can't feel anywhere else you know you're around all these people who are you know have the same energy as you um who love the same music as you but um you know of course because they are because they are cancelled the energy that music gives you, it isn't something that can be suppressed and it's something that's always going to be there. So that's kind of like the background of um, this quote. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start drawing. Um, so in Fresco, you can use a brush tool here, which allows you to um, work and draw in vector. Um, so I'm going to be using that today. It's just really good if you want to, at some point, edit your drawings. Um, you can scale them up or down without it losing um, its clarity. Um, so I'm going to be using the basic round brush, which I've actually edited. So I've got no pressure dynamics, no velocity dynamics, nothing, just a plain and simple um, round brush. So I'm going to choose this color i'm just going to draw in black firstly um so i'm just going to go straight in with the drawing but sometimes i tend to use the like a guide um which really helps in sort of getting the letters really straight um recently fresco adobe fresco got updated and one of the updates was a snap line so if you wanted to, if you just draw and sort of stop at the end there, it was getting a bit sticky. Um, it basically creates a straight line. But um, yeah, so I use guides sometimes, but I do just like to draw freehand and kind of just erase my mistakes if I'm making any. But um, depending on obviously your project guides are probably the best thing to use really also if you have a sketch that's like pretty spot on it makes it really easy to to draw definitely that new feature actually helps it just snaps straight in to shapes yeah it's really helpful And I think another reason why I kind of just like just going straight in with drawing is because um, I don't know if you've noticed, but like all these old school sort of posters and stuff, they look really 
they look hand rendered and I just like that look. I think it's just a really cool um, sort of way to yeah. create something. You know, Jackie has shared in the chat today that um, Jackie loves Fresco now and wouldn't have used it if she hadn't visited these live sessions. So that's so good, Jackie. Sure. That is so good. We use Fresco a lot in my house, I've got to say. Um, and I got into drawing through tracing other pictures. That was something I think I shared on, um, you know, uh, maybe a couple of other lives, Adobe lives ago. Um, it's a good tip, isn't it, to get into it. If you're not an artist, you don't want to get into drawing. Um, I do like the new, um, the, the live brushes that they have. I mean, that's so cool. Like, I'm not, I haven't actually used the watercolour brush myself, but um, it's really quite cool. The way that it, it emulates is that the word emulate I think. I think that's the word um that you can just like paint but it just looks like watercolors <laughs> yeah cool. it does and Robert asks is this um your go-to app now like is fresco your go-to for this pretty much I mean I do like that you can go and um export this into photoshop I think that's kind of one of the features that I really like because you can tweak your design um and like I said before, you can draw in vector and I haven't come across an app on iPad. Maybe there is, but um, I haven't come across an app that allows you to do that, except for Illustrator and obviously Fresco. And but maybe, I think there, there probably is, but um, yeah. No, I don't know. So yeah. I'm going to duplicate this layer and um, just going to change the color of this top layer here. So I kind of always make uh, a duplicate of a layer before I change it, just in case. And I'm just going to use this color here. I kind of want to go for like a neon kind of vibe, um, kind of similar to the love box um, aesthetic. So I'm just going to change, let's change that. And then I think with this piece, I want to create a gradient. So one of the ways I found that you can create a gradient on this is um, through a mask. So I'm going to create a empty mask. Um, and I'm going to use a soft round brush. There we go. And then um, I'm gonna change that and change the uh, change the color. Sorry, to this one here. So you've got a gradient. Nice. I would never have thought to do that. I would have just gone with the watercolor and kind of just blended yeah. it. Yeah, but that is I actually better. tried. Yeah, it's really cool. I tried a few um, different methods and I found this one to be probably the best one. Um, cool. And then what I do is make sure that's in one group so everything is together. Um, so the layer that we have that we duplicated and then hid, I'm going to duplicate that one again. Um, and this time I'm going to create a block shadow. So I'm going to grab the paint bucket tool and just change the color so if i just move this and then change the color of each letter and then i'm going to go back to our vector tool the vector brush the basic round and i'm going to now just join the corners of each letter and color it in it's so quick so quick, really quick. And also, if you can't see the layer, just, just change the opacity a bit just to make it easier. Nice, it's, it's so easy to use actually. Um, really easy. Yeah. In the chat, people are talking about uh, getting new iPads now. 
they can get involved. Yeah, I've only had the iPad for about two years now. Um, before I used to use um, Illustrator on my desktop, but these apps just make it make drawing like super easy. And there we go. And obviously, the edges you can tidy up um, with the eraser tool. But I think now I might just leave it. And I'll get back to that in a minute. So that was a simple kind of block lettering. There we go. Cool. Um, okay, I'm just going to go into my next word. I'm just using the same brush, I think, throughout um, this piece. And this is my colour palette here, guys. I've got a little colour palette for the whole thing. And what I tend to do is just use a few colours if I'm creating a piece. I do, I actually quite like clashing colours. Um, but, yeah, tend to just stick to a color palette. Nice. One of the things actually that I've done in, um, in Fresco is I've created my own brushes in Adobe Capture. So mm -hmm. I've taken pictures of like textures or like leaves and things and then uh, imported them into my brush library in Fresco. And so then I've got different textures and things to use in some of the pictures. So I use them for like hair or stuff like that. And that's really cool. So that's quite cool. I've never, I've never done that before. I think I do. That's such a great thing, actually, to have your own brush, create your own brushes. It's addictive, I think. <laughs> Once you start, you're like, oh, I think that's something that we're looking to. That's awesome. Oh, there's one thing, actually, that I wanted to share is that you, oh, there we go, typo, um, was that you can get a grid building brush, and that helps with um, lettering. So that's something that you can invest in if you're into lettering. Okay. I'm gonna fill that letter, the letters in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with, um, this layer, I'm going to duplicate it and create a shadow. So another black shadow, I think. And then again, just joining up the ends of the letters. Loving the colours already. It's it's so summery, so um, very love box. Yes, um, actually the colours. So I just recently posted um, a picture of some socks on my Instagram, and that was kind of like my inspiration for the colour palette today. <laughs> um, but yeah, inspiration comes from everything, and pink and green actually it has to be one of my favourite colour combinations. Nice. Find I'm rotating my head as you rotate your picture. Right? Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> no, that's just me being strange, but uh, <laughs> you just see me doing this. But that's why the iPad's easy. Do you know what? That, that's what I do love actually about working on the iPad is that you can, you know, maneuver it around to get into those spaces, uh, change your yeah. view. Good. And Sajana, um, uh, Sanjana in the chat says, so clean and well done. Uh, she says, mine's oh, thank you. wobbly, still drawing with an iPad. I was really, do you know what, as well, make sure you change your nibs on your Apple Pencil because that makes a huge difference. Um, really? Yeah, it's only, so I've had my iPad for about two years now and I only just changed my nib recently because it started lagging actually when I was drawing. But I know people who change their nibs after like six months. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's quite important that you change nymphs because it makes a huge difference when it comes to drawing. I've not thought of that. I've had mine, yeah, for a good few months. Maybe it's time. So you get a nib actually when you buy um, an eye eye pencil, uh, eye pencil, an apple pencil. Um, you get a nib in the actual box, which I completely forgot about. But um, but yeah, this is it. And obviously, it does need tidying up, so you can go back with the eraser tool. And just clean up those edges and you can even make sort of sharper edges here. It looks so good already, and it's um. I wouldn't think to do this, you know, in um, in fresco on the on the iPads, you know. So this is really good to see, and good tips as well for the uh, for the nibs. I, I think I saw a comment there from Sandrine who said that um, you've changed your nibs quite regularly because they become a little bit odd shapes. I think you said uh, you draw a lot with the tilt on it, so it doesn't help. This is all. So this is there. Uh, it's new to me. This. And Tony agrees. Tony Harmer. Hey, Tony. He says they do make a difference. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm happy with how that looks. How long do you think you would spend on a project like this? Um, to make a poster in this way? Um, oh my god, I could spend hours. Like, the thing is with me as well, like, I'd probably finish it in a day, but then I'd always go back to it. I'd change the colours, I'd just, like, change the layout. Um, like, yeah. It could be hours, it could be days, it could be weeks. <laughs> um, go, okay. And then I think I'll just leave that there. We're going to edit this layer as well. And it's good that you're doing these in the separate layers because then you can edit it easily. Because I imagine if you were just working for so one, to. you know, that would just be, that'd be hard. Yeah, it's so important that you work on separate layers because, and even when you're doing the block layering, you always have to do it separately. You can always merge them later. Um, but it's, when you're in this whole process, it's definitely better to have it um, in separate layers. And group them as well, so you can find them easily, because I'm so messy when it comes to like Photoshop and Illustrator. I'm so messy when it comes to um, my layers. But yeah, so definitely kind of... That's a good idea. I don't think I do that, actually. I don't group anything um, when I'm using it. I'm doing a really basic, like, block text here. Again, really sort of... Um, there is a kind of cheat way to do this. You can get the, um, the shape tool. And actually, let me do that now. Um, you can get the shape tool here. And then fill that in and then use the eraser tool to create the letter so i'm just doing this by eye cool i just glanced over at the uh, at the chat to see there's any questions and I saw a comment from Robin about going somewhere just as a pantomime horse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> random. I don't know what it is that's there. <laughs> cool. 
And then obviously you can neaten up your edges using the snap line. Sanjana has a question for you in the chat actually, Jasmine. It said, um, how long have you been doing this? Um, like digital work or just like art in general? Because, um, well, both, both really. Um, oh God, it's been a very long time. I, I would say after university, I kind of, um, like my artwork, definitely went through different stages but in terms of like typography and lettering I would say the last three to four years um where I kind of picked it up again I was definitely interested it interested in it in university but it wasn't something that I kind of put out there it was more to sort of sketchbook work um but then over the years like it was yeah I just I was just so drawn to typography um, so yeah, I would say three to four years. And Joanna asks here, um, where do you usually go to find references for these types of posters? Um, so I have actual cassette tapes at home. So my parents' cassette tapes. So that was a huge, huge, um, like, like, that was such a cool place to just go and just check out the cassette tapes at home. So having those references there in person is cool but you know places like pinterest or um just the internet or books even are a great great place to um get some inspo yeah and when you're not creating something for a, like a, a paid project what type of things do you create on your own uh for your own creativity um i kind of go back to hand painting so hand painted stuff um or even sketchbook work you know just to yeah just anything not digital because <laughs> i feel like i do a lot of digital work now but um yeah it's kind of nice to take a break from from that for sure i feel like that kind of recharges you in a sense as well yeah yeah definitely i find that i write lots of handwritten letters these days I'm writing more because of the fact that everything's so digital and everything's over email and text and WhatsApp. So, um, yeah, I'm really loving letters at the moment. It's nice to have a break, isn't it, from the digital Yeah, sometimes. definitely. I feel like as well during lockdown, um, you kind of, you do kind of sort of get that as well because during lockdown it was so easy just to get lost in your screen and like, just to feel, I mean, obviously it's a way to feel connected, but yeah, it's also important to disconnect and kind of recharge and Okay, I think that is cool. And I'm going to also create a layer for that and then fill that in with black. More little shadow. Nice. I'm totally going to be copying this now. Try <laughs> to do this with my motto. We were saying just before we went oh live, God, yeah. we were talking about our mottos and my I don't know if it's a new thing, but my motto at the moment is uh, a Kesha lyric, um, don't stop, make it pop. And I said to Jasmine that I'm really inspired by the colours and the, you know, the designs that Jasmine uses. So I'm going to make this in fresco. And yeah, definitely. Like, um, I feel like it's a cool little quote there. And I think something yeah. in this style would be really cool. Mm. I'll share it in Discord. And there's chat in Discord. I should also mention to everybody as a reminder, you know, we're chatting in Behance. So if you want to get involved in the chat and ask Desmond some questions today, then come in behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. Um, jump into the conversation. So for this type, um, I'm going to do something really different. So in so in um, Bollywood posters, like really old school Bollywood posters, you'll see like they have 
that they have type that's almost broken looking. Um, and I thought that's kind of like a cool way to illustrate this word, kind of like a breakaway that you're not contained. So I wanted it, I wanted it to be kind of um, sort of weathered, have a sort of weathered look. So you'll see how this will eventually kind of transform when we add the color and the little sort of cracks and stuff. So kind of like a Flintstones kind of vibe. Um, yeah, just a really old school kind of 90s, 80s type style lettering. And I've used this kind of style as well in some of my paintings. Nice. Would you find that you, you're going to complete this project in fresco or would then the, you know, the next step be taking this and moving this into another app? I mean, what, where would you go? Um, I think, I think I'll probably continue this in fresco. Um, and if need be, if I think it needs some additional sort of elements that I might not be able to put in Fresco, I might put it into Photoshop and, um, or Illustrator and see what happens. But I think for now, I'm liking the way it's turning out, so probably just stick to Fresco. Yeah. And the great thing about handwriting as well is that there's no right or wrong. Um, you can do whatever you want and just have fun with it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so, um, so this is a fun part. I'm going to use a different brush for this. I think I'm going to use the taper brush, basic end taper brush. See how that works. actually i'll use this one and i'm going to add some details to this so i kind of want to add more cracks to this and i love this brush because the way it just tapers in the end is really nice yeah this would be good for like a halloween uh type thing as well right to oh yeah definitely kind of and you know, speaking of shoes, I know Tony. Uh, Tony's on in the chat. Tony uh, drew a pair of Vans. It was like a uh, drew on a pair of Vans with some kind of Halloween design that looked pretty cool. So um, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Did he? Oh, so he drew directly onto the onto the, the shoe. shoe. Mm. Yeah. And Tony says, laugh out loud, I still have those. They were good. <laughs> okay, so just adding some cracks. I think already like, you can see how effective something so small can be. Yeah. Tony says they're still on his Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and Tony, I think at the start I was saying that Jasmine um, had created these amazing shoes in collaboration with Adidas, and they're on Jasmine's um, Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'm inspired, honestly. But Jasmine, the, they're absolutely amazing. Thank you. Really good, you know. Really good. Okay, this is the long bit. I'm almost done. Gareth has said, um, Sharpie, do a good material marker pen. I bought one for customizing some basic primary plimp soles. Um, Gareth, that was the discussion that I had with Jasmine at the start of this, yeah. actually. And Jasmine recommended that we use Posca pens as they are acrylic. Is that right, Jasmine? Yeah, they're acrylic. So if you yeah. heat set it, um, 
they won't like nothing will happen to your design so that's so, a good tip we should do yeah. another adobe live on on this alone just trainers oh my god yes i'm so Imagine. down <laughs> i would love that i would love it yes yeah, sandrine you're on it posca's also at well on fabric yes sandrine you can also use fabric paints um but just use a bit of fabric medium um if you're going to use acrylic paints so you can use acrylic paints as well <laughs> nice Almost done. And uh, Jasmine, what do you find takes you the most amount of time? So let's say you've got a deadline for a, a project that you're working on, if it's a poster or graphic or something. And um, what do you spend the most time doing? Um, hmm. I would say, because when it comes to sort of customization pieces, um, I plan like really well ahead just so I know what I'm doing because once once it's done you can't there's no going back um so in that kind of I guess that takes me less time so I just recently customized some shoes and that took me about a day but I was really taking my time just a few hours actually really but I would say something digital would probably take me ages because um slightly longer because I'm always going back and changing the colors the layout um yeah so definitely a digital piece for sure yeah i think it's for me it's anything i've drawn i just keep going back thinking oh no but that could be that way oh no i need to change that so yeah. it's, it's addictive isn't it though it is because you're, you're like oh i need to be better <laughs> yeah no definitely but it's quite hard as well when you create a painting again with that there's no going back so for that planning is definitely essential but with digital stuff you can just have fun with it and yeah just do whatever you want yeah. okay your I think designs are really fun by the way really fun i love the you. color and the variety really good okay so on the edges of these words i'm going to add some little kind of breakaway pieces just some little so just like it's going to be coming off the page um i'll show you what i'm going to be doing in a bit i'm going to add some shadow to this as well this is such a cool brush because it kind of does like you don't even have to like with the brush i was using earlier it was just kind of it didn't really have any depth to it, but this one, it adds a lot of character to something you draw. I think we had a comment earlier on in the chat that said bedrock. It is very much like that. Yes. Thing, so. <laughs> no. Nice. Okay, I think that's cool. I might add a few more maybe later um cool okay so again i'm gonna duplicate that layer and just keep that below the one i'm working on um i'm now gonna add some color to this so i think i'm gonna add a really bright kind of pink and then also And Jasmine, whilst you're doing that, and from Wins asked a good question. Um, do you have any advice for students that are just leaving university? Like, what's the best way to get into the industry that you found after you left? Um, so after I left uni, I made sure that I just continued my passion projects um, alongside anything else I was working on, just to build your portfolio. Um, I also made sure I got involved in like different exhibitions and just kind of, you know, put myself out there and make myself known, I think is definitely essential. Like you share your work. Don't be afraid to share your work. I think there's loads of, I remember when I left uni, I, I was a bit scared to share my work. Like, is it good enough? But honestly, like just share it and, um, 
yeah just don't be afraid to like show people who you are and what you're about and yeah just you know carry on creating like just don't stop because it doesn't happen overnight I remember leaving uni and was like you see all these people that you follow on Instagram and stuff like that and you you know you think oh why isn't it happening to me and honestly I had I felt so low at times but it's a process and you just have to trust your journey because like everyone has a sort of different journey um and there's no right or wrong way like I said before with this even like there's no right or wrong way to do something it's just you gotta do it and just kind of ride the waves (laughs) yeah Definitely. I think Instagram's huge, actually, for stuff like that. Even just connecting with people that are working. Even like Femtime, yeah. for example, you were saying earlier on, how you got connected with them. and um, They have a huge following in, in Instagram. And yeah, but definitely riding the waves, for sure. Yeah. That looks so good. So I'm adding a shadow to this again. So just the same as what we did before. Oh, um, Just duplicate that layer and just changing just filling it in with the black. I just love like the contrast you get with the black against a different color, a bright color. I think it's so, um, it's just really effective. And we have a question from Big Brother in the chat. Uh, (laughs) Do you use mood boards to get inspired or do you draw directly? Um, I tend to draw directly. I do have um, like a Pinterest board that I kind of keep just images that I love um, and I always kind of go back to that just get some inspiration but I have books and stuff as well Um, earlier on I said that I have a lot of like vintage clothes and I feel like that is such a major source of inspiration for me Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah like just yeah Pinterest Pinterest and this is stuff I have at home really but also as well like i tend to go back on um some of my past work and i feel like and sketchbooks as well because i feel like sketchbooks have you know um ideas that you might have had at the time but not necessarily used and i feel like that's a great sort of place to go back and get inspiration as well yeah okay i think that is cool all right, so we've got all the type done. Um, I'm now going to add some funky kind of bits to this. Um, so I definitely want each of the words to sort of stand out more. Um, so with this one, I wanted to... So with this whole piece, I wanted it to be sort of like a sticker-like poster. Um, have that kind of aesthetic. So... Um, I've drawn some of these in like a circle or a square so I'm going to do that now so I'm going to get a new layer I'm going to go grab a shape I'm going to change this basic shape to a circle and I think I'm going to put cannot into an oval kind of shape and I'm going to fill that in and then I think I'm going to change that colour now to something that's going to contrast everything so I think I'll choose this sort of mustard colour. Okay. And duplicate that. I'm gonna create a inner circle, sorry, an outer circle, an outline. And choose a different colour for this. Oh, see, that is a classic case of not choosing a new layer. (laughs) Grab that other layer, there we go. And then fill that in. Cool. And I'll just fix that up. And... Let's just centralise that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to put these all in one layer now um, and you can just basically change that about, change the size and again we've drawn this in vector so you can 
scale it up and down as many times as you want and it won't lose its um, sharpness. So I think for energy, I want to definitely add an outline. I feel like it's quite clean. It needs a bit of, it needs to be sort of out there. And I think for the background for this, I'm going to go for a black. So I'm going to grab, get a new layer and fill that in with black. And Jasmine, Robert's asked a really good question in the chat for you. Um, Robert says, has the Bollywood graphic style evolved much since it became more popular? Um, as in like on actual Bollywood kind of posters? Yeah, I think from the posters that you shared at the very beginning for your inspiration for that Bollywood style. Oh, um, oh in terms of my work? Um, well, Robert's, uh, it just says, yeah, it just has the Bollywood graphic style. So maybe Bollywood graphic stars in general, have they evolved? Um, yeah, I think now, I think before, I, I really love the way that everything was so sort of like flat looking, if that makes sense. Like everything was kind of like, nowadays it's a lot of sort of like 3D kind of looking um, visuals. Obviously they use a lot of... Um, um, they obviously use photography now as well and like stills from the movies but I mean they used to before but a lot of them were hand painted and I just love that kind of that old school really rustic like honest kind of look but now it's changed for sure and I'm not I'm not too fond of it and I feel like when it comes to the type and the different styles that they use I feel like there, there are elements of that still there but I think um, yeah it's definitely changed with the times it's gone much more modern um, and much more sort of computer rendered rather than hand sort of rendered. Yeah. Um, what's that doing? Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab another shape. So I want each word to be kind of its own, but um, Definitely want it to be coherent as well. I'm gonna fill that in. And maybe. And we've got about three minutes or so left now. Oh, no way. Oh my God, it's so fast. <laughs> Time has blown by. Um, and this is looking so good. Do you know what I was, I was thinking that this is very love box, very colorful. Um, and even the message that you have here, you know, the energy can yeah. be contained. Because Lovebox is such a fun festival. It is. Um, and I definitely wanted to sort of show that within this piece. I mm. wanted it to be really sort of eclectic and just crazy. And yeah, just really kind of energetic, kind of showed the wording within the whole visual. Siobhan says, um, very festival vibe, definitely. Yeah. People are agreeing. Um, so I'm going to incorporate pattern into this as well. So I'm going to create a little border. Okay, and I think the B as well, I want to show off that, um, the shadow, so I'll add another box to that. And when you're looking at this now, like, it, to me, it looks, it, I wouldn't think fresco when I saw, when I'd seen it, right? I wouldn't think, oh, this was definitely created in fresco. It just, uh, it's, it's so good. Sanjana says, that's so Flintstone. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get pink actually for that. Cool. And then I'm going to use the same method as I did the other one and create a outline.
Oh, you didn't need to go for that. Gareth has said, I, I can't help thinking of Scooby Doo's mystery machine. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yes, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Fred's band, Sanjana says the same thing. It's the, I think the word contained at the bottom definitely makes me feel that. Yeah, I get that. That is so thing. funny. But do you know what? Um, like these are the colors how they are now, but I always, like I said, go back and then I'll change the colors around, um, kind of, um, yeah, just add a few little tweaks here and there. So, guys, when you see yeah. the final piece, it might not be Scooby Doo anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Desmond. Honestly, I think we're we're at time now, and it's oh like we to do some more. But um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so um, much for having forward. me. Oh, you're welcome, honestly. And I, I definitely think there was so much chat about, um, you know, art on trainers and more drawing that we should definitely... Yeah, no, definitely. ...to look at that kind of thing. That would be fabulous. Um, everybody, we are back same time tomorrow, midday. Joe Alam is here tomorrow for What Would Joe Do? So we've got some more Premier Pro action in the live feed. So please come back and join us tomorrow. It'll be great to see you. And thank you again, Jasmine. Thank um, you. And all the best. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs>